Hey guys, Q&A number 10 into the double digits here. Let's get at it. First question is, how come a loss in inches doesn't always result in a loss in pounds? So fat is denser than, or sorry, muscle is denser than fat is. So fat takes up more space, muscle is denser, so it's gonna take up a smaller amount of space. A really common saying out there is that a pound of muscle isn't equal to a pound of fat. Um, a pound is a pound, they both weigh the same, but muscle is gonna take up less space, fat is gonna take up more space because it's fluffier um, and it is less dense. So sometimes you can get, or you can stay the same on the scale, um, but say maybe you've put on a little bit of muscle and you've lost some fat, you can technically uh, stay the same weight-wise, but you've lost inches, say, in your waist because that muscle is denser than the fat tissue. So number two, why are low carb diets so effective for fat loss? So there are a bunch of factors that, that come into play when uh, low carb diets are um, implemented. So first off, right off the bat, you know, you're going to lose some water because carbohydrate pulls water with it into the body. So when you drop a, a whole bunch of carbs, you're going to lose something called glycogen, which is just a fancy word for stored carbohydrate in the body and you're gonna lose that glycogen and the water that goes along with that, that glycogen or the carbohydrate. Um, so you initially, you start a low carb diet and you lose a bunch of weight right off the bat. So that's one of the factors. And then also low carb diets just tend to have a huge satiation effect. So people are hungrier and by, or less hungry and by default they eat less. So. That's another reason why a low carb diet could be super effective for fat loss. Also, they're gonna get a lot of veggies in typically, which are very low carb. That's gonna have a big satiation effect. So there are, there are compounding factors here, but um, right off the bat, that big drop typically is uh, some inflammation and then also water loss via the carbohydrates, the glycogen, um, pulling the water into the body. Number three, should I take vitamin C every day? I'm not a fan of taking vitamin C daily. I think that it's a useful thing to save for when you're sick or if you feel a flu cold coming on, then you can start dosing with it. But to kind of have a baseline vitamin C dose, I'm not a huge fan of. I feel like it just kind of levels out and um, you should save it for times when you actually need it. Uh, that's it. Three quick ones. If you guys have any questions for future Q&As, hit me up and I uh, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.